Okay, let's discuss some basic rudiments. The first, flams. A flam is created by starting with the right stick up, left stick down. And what's going to happen is the right hand stick is going to play a downstroke. Simultaneously, the left hand is going to play an upstroke. So at the end, my right stick should be down and left should be up. Because we are creating a height difference, left being lower than the right, the left should hit a split second before the right hand. Common mistakes for students is at the last moment they lift up the left hand to the same height or somewhere in between and the hit sticks instead of hitting one right after the other hit simultaneously. Common mistake. The opposite error is for the left hand stick to hit so far in front of the right hand stick that it creates a separate rhythm. Here's an example of it done incorrectly. Here's the exercise done properly. Another common mistake is for the student to separate this rudiment into two separate motions. With the right stick descending, the left hand rising later. It should happen simultaneously. This is an example of the two-part flam done incorrectly. The lift is occurring after the note has been played. This is an example of it done correctly. You'll notice that the lift of this left hand occurs immediately after the flam. Let's talk about drags or roughs. Uh, currently the terms are used rather interchangeably. Same starting position we're simply going to hit the drum twice with the little note instead of just once, creating a rough. Same rules apply. Immediately after the note has been played, the left hand stick rises. If the left hand sticks if the left hand stick stays down and then comes up later, it would look like this. A rough done incorrectly. It should be one fluid smooth motion. Roughs done correctly. Next we're going to talk about buzz rolls. First we're going to begin by reviewing dead strokes. Stick in the up position, dropping the stick on the head, letting it bounce to a rest. Both hands. Now, it's important to encourage students to, to get the stick to bounce as many times as possible. A very, very loose grip will aid in that. When performing buzz rolls, often find performers creating space in their hand in order to let the stick rebound as much as possible. Now, the next step is to do dead strokes overlapping slightly. I'm going to drop my right hand stick 
and before it hits the last time and comes to rest, I'm going to begin a left hand dead stroke and try and overlap them slightly. Now we are slowly going to increase the speed of the individual strokes. We're going to eliminate the heavy impact at the beginning and hopefully when we come out we'll get a nice smooth sounding buzz roll. Nice consistent sound. This is the snare drum's way of emulating a long tone on a wind instrument. So an example of the exercise with increasing speed until we arrive at a buzz roll. Let's talk about rim shots for a moment. Um, in concert band literature and percussion ensemble literature, oftentimes students will be called upon to play a rim shot. Now, the easiest way to accomplish a rim shot is to lay one stick across the head with the middle of the stick actually resting upon the metal hoop and then striking that stick with the opposite hand. This is the most surefire way to get a consistent rim shot. Now, if a student does not have time to plant their stick and strike the shot, then they're going to have to do it by simply playing a downstroke and striking the rim and drum head simultaneously. Roll skeletons are the underlying subdivision used by drummers when performing rolls. The most common of these skeletons are the 16th note based roll. When a percussionist is performing a quarter note roll played at a moderate to fast tempo, the underlying skeleton should be 16th note based. When performing a quarter note roll at a very slow tempo, the percussionist may decide to use a sextuplet based roll skeleton. When a drummer is faced with an extraordinarily fast tempo, he or she may decide to use a triplet based roll skeleton. <laughs> Examples of tied and untied rolls. This is a half note roll tied to a quarter note. Notice that there is no space between the buzz roll and the release. An example of a half note roll untied followed by a quarter note. Notice the space between the buzz roll and the release note. 